Hello friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. I am Jenny and welcome to our weekly nursery tour. I have got a great selection of plants right behind me that I can't wait to share with you um, and talk about because it is really, gosh, the middle of September, I guess now, and it is prime season to be planning and planting your garden. So we're going to talk about some perennials and some great shrubs that would be wonderful additions to your landscape. So start preparing your heart and mind that this is going to be a great planting planting session season. But before we get into those, give you just a little bit of an update of what is happening here at the nursery besides the great plants that we're going to talk about. So I think you can see um, behind me that we have gotten the first of the two greenhouses has been taken down. Now, I know there was some confusion with some, some folks about exactly what's going on, why are we taking greenhouses down, and which greenhouses are these? Well, these two behind me are our first two greenhouses here at the retail portion of the nursery. They were put up in like 2015 and 13, I believe it was. So the one that is still standing is actually the first one. We call that greenhouse one. The one that is gone is greenhouse two because it was just put up second. These are not the ones that we just built the last two winters. So the ones that you watched us build this past winter is up at the production lot. So that is not what these are. We're going to take these down and replace them with one large retail friendly, uh, customer friendly, shopping friendly experience of a greenhouse. These will be, it will be a 48 by 48 and it will be a completely different looking um, greenhouse than what these are. It'll be what we call like a gutter connected A-frame. So it'll kind of look like your house as far as like the peak of your house, um, the peak of the barn, so forth and so on. So that's what's going on there. We got a lot of work done um, in just a very short amount of time. I will tell you that demo of a greenhouse goes so much faster than construction. So that is what's going on over there. And then if you can see those great pops of color um, throughout, the mums have begun blooming. They are gorgeous. I mean, this is why we love mums so much because even from this great of a distance, those beautiful plants are just shining bright and, and just all their glory. Now, yes, there are other plants besides mums. We will have those, um, the pansies and the kales and cabbages and all those different components to fall planting here in the south. We will have those um, within the next couple of weeks. So very shortly we will have those, but mums are great. And then I'll show you one kind of up close here in just a second. And then if you see that pallet that's kind of sitting in the middle of the road, like what in the world is that? Well, that is the latest shipment of aquapots that came yesterday. So we're getting in our orders of aquapots. That is the volcanic on milky blue. So if you are familiar with the Proven Winners aquapots, that is by far one of our most popular colors here at Creekside Nursery. It is still wrapped up. We will get it unwrapped and ready to go. We already do have some of those. Um, and then we still have the um, lily leaf in antique white, I believe is what the official name of it. I showed that to you in the last, one of the last videos. So we still have those. So if you are local, we will be happy to help you with your aquapot needs. We do not ship aquapots. Somebody asked, sent me an email and asked if we could ship aquapots sorry we don't proven winners has some that you can go online and get theirs um, but let's now start talking about plants all right so again fall is the fantastic time to start talking about and planting your plants because during the fall the temperatures are cooler we get more rain especially here in the south we get a lot more rain and that is where you have a great time of root growth versus a lot of foliage growth, which is happening in the spring and the summer. Now, we're gonna start with some flowering guys down here, I guess. So, in the south, one of the most iconic flowering shrubs is, without a doubt, the azalea. And so we have lots of different varieties of both 
Encore Azaleas and the Proven Winners Azalea. So I'm just gonna give you a brief overview of the different ones. So what, what is the deal with Azaleas? Both the Encore Azaleas and the Azaleas from Proven Winners, these are re-blooming Azaleas that prefer the sun. These are not your mama's, your grandmama's Azaleas that we grew up with. They will bloom in spring, they will bloom a little bit in summer, and now they are starting to put on their second flush, third flush rather, of blooms. They do great in the south, in the, in the fall. So, Encores, this particular one is Autumn Moonlight. And so, Moonlight is absolutely beautiful because it is a double pure white bloom. Now, these azaleas will come in all different sizes. This, you can tell, is gonna be a bigger one. So this will be like five feet tall, three feet wide. Beautiful, double pure white blooms. Fantastic, azaleas are evergreens. So these make great either foundation plantings, like up against your house, or if you wanna create them out in beds. So we have autumn moonlight. And as a general rule, these are gonna be hardy in like zones seven to 10, the encores. They do like the sun. So if you don't have sun, then these are not gonna be for you. And then this is just a great fall color. This is such a fun one. This is autumn bonfire. And so bonfire, can you tell its habit? Yes, it's gonna be a nice petite one. It's not gonna be a big one like the moonlight. Again, a beautiful double flower on it, a beautiful red. Again, like I said, now this is gonna be a little bit more cold tolerant, six to 10. Um, but this is only gonna be like a three foot tall, three and a half foot wide. And this, like I said, they are just now starting to put on their fall flush of colors. So, so pretty. Um, and then staying with the theme of azaleas, azalea, let's go over here to the Perfecto Mundo from Proven Winners. Now, you can see that this is a totally different color. This is the Perfecto Mundo Double Purple. Again, a beautiful double bloom on it. Nice purple color. Um, this has a, is a strong rebloomer. Sun to part shade, so that means you need at least four to five hours of sunlight per day for this baby to do. And this is from a six to a nine it's gonna be another little petite one. So it's only gonna be two and a half to three feet tall by three feet wide. Um, azaleas typically are kind of a low deer resistant. So if deer are a really big problem, azaleas might not be the, the best choice for you um, because their leaves are rather um, soft. Again, they are evergreen, fantastic. If you want to prune your azaleas, you wanna do it after their spring blooms. So. Azaleas are always a fantastic choice. Now, roses. Look at this beautiful pink rose. So this is oh so easy, double pink from Proven Winners. Makes a nice um, impact from a distance. It's got some pine needles in it, so let's get rid of those. Um, these offer continuous blooms. So it's gonna you know, bloom the whole time. They are gonna be full sun, your roses, predominantly are gonna be sun requirements. Um, so again, at least that five to six hours of direct sunlight or more. Hardy in zones five to nine. So with us in North Carolina, zone seven B, this is the perfect um, zones for it. I love that. It's again, another nice little petite, short, but wide. So these make great ground covers if you wanna put them out. Only maybe like two feet tall and wide and um, they do have, they're very, as far as roses go, they do have some thorns, but they are not like big giant thorns. Very low on the, um, the stickiness con uh, conditions on that. So they're not the big giant thorns, but that just a beautiful pink. The, um, the newer blooms are more of a deep pink and the older blooms are a little bit more of a pale pink. So you get a lot of great variation on these. Um, so, so easy on these because they're called the oh so easy, more disease resistant. Um, so they're not gonna be as prone to diseases as maybe some of the old varieties of roses. Um, so these are fantastic. And if you leave your roses, the old blooms, you get rose hips and rose hips 
are basically these little balls that will turn these gorgeous color in the fall and the winter. So don't prune them until um, late winter, early spring, and you'll get lots of good interest even in the winter from those beautiful rose hips. Now, one of my favorite plants, shrubs, because it's just such a unique plant, um, this is Pearl Glam Beautyberry. Now, this is it is deciduous, so it'll get, um, it'll lose its leaves, but it has beautiful color for the rest of the, the three other seasons out of the year. So for us in the South, we're talking that there's really um, not a lot of foliage for maybe three months. The rest of the year, it is absolutely gorgeous. It has this beautiful green foliage with these dark purple veins in it. In the early summer, late spring, it'll put on white flowers and it'll start from the bottom of the stem and work its way up. Pollinators go crazy over this plant. Those little white flowers turn into these beautiful purple berries. That is why it's called a beauty berry because here in the fall they're just now starting to take on that beautiful purple hue and they will become absolutely iridescent in color. Just this like neon purple color, absolutely gorgeous. And you can see that these berries are covering these stems and they are nice and heavy, nice and full of berries, just gorgeous fall interest to them. Now, Pearl Glam, I gotta check my tag here. She will get kind of, get some height to her. She will be um, four to five tall and wide. So give you some nice structure, either in the middle or the back of your garden, depending on how you have it laid out. But Pearl Glam is just a beautiful one. It is a native plant, I do believe. We'll put all that information, of course, on the screen for you. But if you want something that gives you three seasons of interest and gives you structure even in the winter, Pearl Glam Beautyberry is a fantastic one for you. Now, I know some of you have really strong feelings about boxwoods. Either it's kind of like you love them or you hate them. I personally love boxwoods. I think they're just a fantastic plant. Obviously, boxwoods are evergreens. This is Sprinter Boxwood from Proven Winners. And it is just a great staple that you can put in your garden. It provides that great evergreen color. You imagine if you had boxwoods in the back and then you had roses in the front or you had azaleas i mean the color contrast on those are absolutely gorgeous and so not only are boxwoods low maintenance these are very disease resistant so they um this particular variety is very disease resistant to the boxwood blight which if you have been around um, any kind of boxwoods for a long time you know that that was a really common um, problem that went through the boxwoods and it would kill them and you would have to basically get rid of them well these have a high resistance to them and they are have a high resistance to deer in fact proven winners is going to start marketing their um, sprinter boxwoods as deer proof so that's going to be something that maybe that you see coming in the future so these are fantastic they are easily managed to whatever shape or size that you want to have them um, really if you're going to prune them you're going to prune them about once a year to shape them up the hardiness zone is going to be a five to nine again we're right there in the middle in zone seven easily managed anywhere from two feet to four feet tall and wide and they'll do sun to shade so it can be either in a shady condition or a sun condition I just love them. I love boxwoods and I love these sprinters because they are so, so easy. Now, another one, another plant, shrub, that is really iconic in the South, of course, are hydrangeas. You've got your azaleas, you've got your hydrangeas. Well, here we have the new from Proven Winners. This is Firelight Tidbit. Now, Firelight Tidbit is one that we brought in as that we grew ourselves. Well, we I think we grew all these ourselves. Um, so she's a little late on blooming just because they came in late in the season. Typically, this would be a bloom that you would see, say, like in, I don't know, end of June, end of July, because it is a panicle hydrangea. It blooms on new growth, meaning that you're going to guarantee to get blooms every single year. Now, what's so great about Firelight Tidbit is that it sounds exactly, it is exactly what it sounds like. It's going to be a nice little tiny petite one. It's only going to be three feet tall, three feet wide. So if you're familiar with Firelight, the big daddy, 
she will get to be like uh you know like six to eight feet tall and wide and fire lights i love because they are always reliable that they turn that beautiful pink rose color for us so firelight tidbit will do the same thing starts out this beautiful creamy white will take on the pink hues and then turns a beautiful rose color in the fall so again this is not the typical color for her in the fall is simply because this is her first year growing but full sun conditions so at least five hours or more beautiful hydrangea a three by three would do great in a container obviously does great in the landscape as well so had in the garden over there right beside the patio is doing great now some perennials we've talked about these before these are not new but they are looking fantastic and these would be great additions to put into your garden with these shrubs so the first one is the beautiful desert plains grass if you've been around me for very long you know how much i love putting grasses in the landscape it's just a fun new texture brings movement to the garden so desert plains is a perennial it is going to be full sun it will eventually get to be four feet tall and that includes your um, the little plumes that you see right now a beautiful white um, plume with the green foliage that's turning on to some pinky red color so in the fall you'll have a little bit of fall interest in that i like to leave my grasses um, in the ground obviously in the ground <laughs> i like to leave them intact all winter and then come probably about february um, that's when you're going to prune them and basically you take them all up and you give them a flat top because in the winter i like to have that beautiful kind of structure and that nice color even though it is brown it still brings the texture and the movement to your flower bed um, but you want to do want to prune it back before that new growth comes out they are hardy um, and all let's see uh, five to nine again extremely versatile but just such a fun um, grass that brings lots of interest and texture again really four seasons of the year now if you're looking to attract pollinators to your garden then you cannot go wrong with the cat's pajamas nepeta now this is in the mint family so we have um, customers that say that they do have cats and their cats love to like go and rub their face in it they like to lay on it um, but it does have if you don't have a cat just rubbing it oh it's just because it just smells so good because it's in the mint family easy plant to, to grow in your garden nice and low it will only get to be like 12 to 14 inches tall so this is great on the border again massive pollinator attractor so if you're looking to bring in your honeybees and your bumblebees this is a great one to put in there um, it is going to be hardy in zones three to eight and it is going to be um, in the full sun conditions just a fantastic beautiful plant again it smells amazing and you can't beat it for oh it smell and you can even cut some and put some of these flowers in like little arrangements like a little bud vase and then you get that great oh i wish y'all could smell this it's just fantastic so cat's pajamas nepeta is a great one and then the last one that we've talked about before is the daisy may shasta daisy from proven winners just your great classic white shasta daisy big beautiful white blooms on it now again this is september so we're getting to be kind of towards the end of the bloom season for these guys um, so this is not it in, in its prime by no means but it is just a beautiful plant this is one normally i'll say you know you don't really have to deadhead your plants shasta daisies are ones that really do respond well if you can go in about once a week when you're walking through your garden just have your little pruners with you and just snip off the old blooms that just encourages new growth on them but you can't beat the classic daisy may these are going to be hardy in zones five to nine in the full sun so absolutely beautiful great continuous bloomer fantastic and then i know we've already talked about this once but i'm going to show you it up close look at this going back to our mums so our mums we put all in um, these terracotta pots i know they're, they're plastic terracotta pots but jerry and i made the decision um, years ago to put them in these terracotta pots because from my own personal experience is if 
you know, you go somewhere and they come in these. Now, I know some of y'all like it and that's fine, but I don't want like a bright orange pot with a jack-o'-lantern face on it because maybe that's not going to go with my decor. I like just a nice, simple, clean, classic terracotta pot. It is plastic. It's not like the terracotta pot, but it just looks simple. Now, if you want to pop this down inside one of your ceramic potteries, great go for it in fact i'm going to do that on one of my like the unique stone pieces i'm just going to drop this down in there and call it a day these are 10 inches the pots are 10 inches the mums are not 10 inches they are nice and big beautiful i mean like look at this this is one pot compared to me right nice and big and pretty now we've talked about that mums are early bloomer mid bloomer late bloomer and y'all ask me you know well how do you know I'm not trying to sound like a smarty pants, but basically it's when it blooms. If it's blooming now, it's an early bloomer. If it blooms, you know, first of October, it's gonna be um, a mid bloomer. And when you come to the nursery, you'll see behind this back there, we have all the mums and their buds will be different sizes. So like these buds are nice and big. Now the late bloomers are gonna be ones that are gonna bloom probably like in the end of October into November and their buds right now are nice and tiny. So when you get here, yes, everybody has a tag in there, but it's hard to see. And honestly, do many people know what kind of mums you're buying? No, you just know what color you want and what color you like and when you want it to bloom. So they do have tags, but for most people that doesn't mean anything. Um, but I do love this beautiful orange one. Of course we have the orange, oranges, yellows, reds, pink, purple, and white. So basically we have everything that you could want in a mum. Um, the only thing you have to do to keep your mums happy is water them. Water them every day and they will treat you with lots and lots of blooms. If you are local, we would love to see you. If you're not local, we would love to see you as well. Come make a little road trip and come see us here at Creekside Nursery. Remember we're open Thursdays through Saturdays, nine to three. Um, but y'all have a fantastic day as always. Thank you so much for gardening with Creekside. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.